Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. We're going to be checking out the Ricky Gervais Show. This is Season 2, Episode 8. Guys, please continue to leave comments down below. All your our videos are based on your comments. If you are subscribed, we check those out first. Also, we have a Patreon, guys. But if you can't afford to donate, that's cool. Just continue to like, share, and subscribe. And that helps a lot. Oh yeah, also comment below. I always forget that part. Alright, let's jump into it. One prediction for the future, Carl, is from a, an academic study. What, what the world would be like in about 75 years from mm -hmm. now. And uh, a big prediction they're sort of sure of is that androgyny will rule. But soon you won't even need a female or a man in your life. You'll just need the egg or sperm. And uh, you'll be able to have any coupling you want or, or not. Thoughts, Carl? That, that isn't what I've heard. What were you heard? I well, heard that. So you, got, you, you read a, an academic study, Rick, but yeah. well, let's find out what Carl's well, been reading. I heard we're, uh, you know, we're all going to go ugly. Different point, though, isn't it? It's That's a completely a different, different point, though. Not listening to a word no. Ricky said. But no, it's on. just, it's just uh, if we all sort of go ugly, uh, that will sort the population He gets an out. extra syllable in the word ugly. Mm. Ugly. <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Ugly. Yeah. So that, that just sorts the population out because people aren't sort of having it away. Left well, right well, well, no, well, then that, that doesn't sort of... What do you mean? Sorry, Rick, I don't understand what the hell he said there. Is it's, he, are, you so saying, many... are you saying, because everyone's ugly, everyone won't want to have it away more with the ugly person? Yeah. OK, I still don't... You seem to understand what he's talking about, Rick. I'm still confused. But what, what, he, what he thinks is that if, we all, if we're all ugly, then we still have this strange paradigm of beauty that won't exist, so we won't fancy anyone as no, much. No, they'll still sort of fancy... Because at the end of the day, we're animals, aren't we? Yeah. So we'll still have it away, but yeah. not as much as they'd like to do now, because it's all based on looks. Sorry, so... Uh, but what's this got to do with what Ricky said? What's this world like? Describe, you, describe a typical town or, or country It's exactly... Me. Right, imagine London, you've still got the gherkin, you've still got the big wheel. That's right. it's just everyone's ugly. Right, and they're, and they're doing all the same jobs, are they? they Everyone's just... still, yeah, uh, the so world's what, got to carry what on. What do they look like? What's ugly? Just imagine, like, yeah. I, have you ever seen anyone when you've just gone, look at that? Yeah. Right, well, like, like that. Yeah, but hold on, because it's not no, like because a strict... we have got better looking, haven't we? If I look back now yeah. at a school photo, yeah. you look at my class and you go, what, what was going on then? <laughs> well, you can't tell the difference <laughs> between some all... of the girls and the blokes. When he said, we've got better looking, I thought he was going to talk about cavemen. <laughs> not his yeah, school no. photo. I mean, what happened there? there? There's been no evolution in that time. What are you talking about, Carl? <laughs> we've got better looking now, haven't we? But we will change. Yeah, we'll change. Nine, little things. Years. I mentioned before about uh, your little finger. There'll come a time when that'll go. I've said, I've watched it. I've kept an eye on what my little finger's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does nothing. It never helps out. All the others are grabbing all the stuff. That one just sort of sits there watching. So you can get rid of that, and I think that, that will go in evolution. Think of the books he could have read when he was doing that, when he was monitoring his little finger. <laughs> I've been watching my little finger. But again, if you shaved a caveman, he's basically us. He's basically us. Well, he's basically Carl. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think what's more interesting about the future, Carl, is the fact that technology integrated with humans will be fascinating. So, for instance, they're talking, you know, about the fact that in the future we may even be able to have chips in our head that allow us to access the internet or an equivalent of it directly, mentally. Not, not, so not imagine that. to say, not, not French fries. But hang on, though. Well, at what point are we us, then? Yeah, this is good. Go on, go on. Go on. No, because if I, if I can go on the internet at any time, then that's going to know more than me. What does that mean? OK. When I don't know an answer to something now, mm. which is a lot of stuff... Really? Go on. You yeah. watch University Challenge yeah. and the stuff them, them kids on that know. I just think, where have they stored that? For me, if something doesn't get used within a time period, that's it. But again, it's forgotten again, about. basically, mm. you're, you, you've got about the same hardware I haven't, as those people. Honest to God, I haven't. I know I haven't. So, what I'm saying is, if I want to know the answer to something, I go on the internet. Yeah, right. Now, if I've got a chip in my head with Google on it, yep. I'm never going to use my head. I'll just be forever on Google. <laughs> I'm never going to use my head! Well, I'm not, because <laughs> what's the your point? your head is, though. Because I'm going to get it wrong. The chances are I'll get it wrong, so divert that. 
It's like saying... No, no, you can't bypass the brain straight to Google. When so you're having a chat socially, it's not like they're going, all right, Carl, how are you? And um, you're not there. You're asleep and Google's talking. Oh, I think you'll find that they're... No, no, only... Do you want to see naked ladies? No, <laughs> no only for questions, though, that I don't know. But what I'm saying is, because I don't know a lot of the answers, mm. I'll just say, forget it, leave it connected to Google. So, no, no. so then I'm well, not me anymore. Well, what are you doing? Where's you gone? I'm looking at Google. <laughs> so it is you. No, but what Steve just said is, we'll have a chip in our head. Mm. Right. That can access the internet. Right. Mm. So what, why bother using But you're still knowledge? the go-between. You're, you, Carl, are the go-between between the internet and whatever your but mouth you says. you can't beat the internet. Yes, you but can't, you're the he knows everything. But where does Google get the information from in the first place? Someone on one of them bright people on a University be- Challenge has put being. it on. Yeah, yeah, a human being. So, but I'm going to get lazier. I don't watch University Challenge and go, I want to be like them. I'm going to start reading books. I've accepted I- I'm never going to be like them. I can't play along. All I tend to do is, is, is I-, I say to Suzanne, right, so every question now, I'm going to have egg as the answer. <laughs> and I'm hoping that one day. <laughs> what an amazing game! <laughs> Because oh God! Pursuit. What a lucky lady! Well, she just sees if it works. She just plays along, and then I'm saying, "Oh, it might be this one, or whatever." I remember. The... I love that because I remember once it was about um, five years ago. Uh, Carl and Suzanne were round near Christmas, and me and Jane were there. We were playing different pile of games um, like charades and that. And then one game, you have to do that thing where you have to beat, and you have to do animals, and you have to go. Uh, First one is A, then B. So you say aardvark. Next one goes beaver. Next one goes cat. It came to Carl, he panicked, and he went egg. So you're sat there watching the University <laughs> Challenge, and on a good night, it's, you know, well-known jeweller of Fabergé is well-known for his jewel-encrusted war <laughs> egg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Humpty Dumpty is commonly pictured as a living egg. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Story. It's gonna, if you keep saying the same thing, eventually, it's yeah. like a broken watch. Carl Pilkington's head right, looks isn't? like hay. <laughs> yeah. I've just got more chance of getting it right. Sure. But um, also, he told me uh, w- when he plays University Challenge, um, uh, he says he's given up ever trying to get an answer, so now he tries to guess who's going to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> Another great game! <laughs> Suzanne's roped it on! Unbelievable! How would you do with that? That's not... I'm normally all right on that. <laughs> I'm normally all right on that. There's got to be something else. <laughs> there's there's another... Watch. There's Why another... Like there's it? another evolution thing, though. When you watch brainy people on that, or wearing glasses. Yeah. Mm. What does that tell you? We are reading too much. We're wearing well, the eyes out. Mm, and that y- you can't argue with that, because the evidence well, is there. Can. OK, one more go. What right. do you mean? The chip in the brain mm. isn't part of filling your head with stuff, the journey of filling it with that stuff. <laughs> What do you mean? Whereas if I just, if I'm, say if you had a baby, the baby pops out, it cries a bit, you go, right, we've got, what do you want your baby to be interested in? And you say, I want it to be uh, a plumber. You go, right, (laughs) when it's two, we're going to stick a plumber chip in its head. Right, yeah. It's not right, is it? No. No. I don't know why you chose plumber, either. (laughs) Well, we still need... Plumbing, yeah, I know it? we do, but the, it's uh, odd that they would have chosen for they've got such know, yeah. such kind of small what, it's, it's uh, ambitions his, for it's their It's what babies. his granddad did, and he, he you know, he, they want the sort of the thing to go through the business. They own yes. a plumbing business. <laughs> they want they want the baby to carry on the business. Of the they, want, they want the baby to be able to plumb. Well, what about this chip in the head? But you've made this but you've up. Made the scenario they're, up. they're not putting chips in babies' heads. I thought you said they were. No, what, well, what I, I, say that? No, no, no. I said that. I, I think Steve's right, and I don't know, I haven't read it, but I imagine he's saying it's the next step in convenience with technology and, and, and an interface between a human and uh, a research tool or fun. You know, computers went from being the size of a room to a thing you can wear on your watch. So the next step may be, oh, you, you won't forget your palm top, you won't forget your iPod, you won't forget your laptop. It's, it's in there, it's an interface. I know, but it makes us but... lazy. Carl, it's not a question of it's not that it's not that Google is now Carl. Is it, Carl? it looks like it looks like Carl, but it's just spamming, you know, little pop-ups about offers you can buy and all the cheap holidays here and there. He's not the man I'm at it. Right, look at it like this. Jesus. Look, I see it all the time now. Go on. 
you go, Ooh. where are you going to someone? And they go, <laughs> I'm going to uh, Dorset. Hi. Oh, all right. What road are you taking? Don't know. I'll just pop on the sat nav. Now, mm. that's a start, isn't it? Okay. Let's act that out with me, okay? Um, I'm going away for the weekend, Carl. Are you? Yeah. Where are you going? Dorset. Oh, yeah. How uh, are you getting there? Uh, car. All oh, right. Uh, which uh, which way are you going? Um, don't know. Why? Why do you want to know? Oh, just just making a just making a friendly chat. Just you know, I'm, I'm interested in geography. Which way are you going? Well, I don't know really. I've, I've got a sat nav in my car, and I'm getting there. And what do you mean? What? What? what Easy, isn't it? Well, I don't, I'm not. A, I'm not a pigeon. I don't. I mean, you got an A to Z. Well, well yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a, on a computer with the A to Z. What's the difference between looking at an A to Z and? It's a bit and lazy. Bit lazy don't not it? really. No. No. <laughs> Why? Why is it any different that I've got it computer eyes so I can go along? That's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It's a bit. Don't go to A to Z when you're driving along. Clive, who are you talking to? Because we need to hit the road. We need to get going. What is this? Uh, uh, this fucking idiot who wants to know what road I'm <laughs> sorry, taking, which is a fucking boring thing who, to ask. Anyway. Sorry, who is this? Talk? Because <laughs> we really got to get going. a fucking dickhead. Who, 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 I think he's an A to Z salesman by the door. I mean, we're just, we're just, we're just tell him we're using the sat nav because it's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. It's the quickest, most efficient way of doing it. No, but but look, look but what's happened. Who the fuck are you? Would Columbus find America? If he'd had a sat nav. Yes! No, he wouldn't. He'd have put in America and it would have taken him he to wouldn't. He wouldn't. America. He only found it because he got lost. Now, if everybody just but, goes... Hold on, hold on. How would he, an undiscovered country, be on a sat nav? <laughs> no. Go on. But I, I just What's mean... the difference between the sat nav and the map in that regard? Because I've found some lovely little cafes on roads I've never been on. <laughs> From finding oh, a continent to a little cafe. I love that. I love that. A little greasy I'm, I am off to discover the unknown world. Where are you going? Well, I don't know yet. It's the unknown world. What are you taking? Just a uh, boat like all lazy swim, you can. <laughs> I love the fact that he's so Luddite now, he's annoyed at the sat nav. I mean, you'd have probably given Columbus a hard time. Oh, got a compass. Don't you know where north is, you twat? <laughs> I just think there's something in being lost. I never feel lost. I just think, oh, I've had a diversion. <laughs> oh, no, because you find you find new things. I'm forever going down. Suzanne's asking the French peasant where oh, the. Uh... I just think, you know, Columbus. All right, what's the most interesting thing you found when when lost? Uh, like I say, they normally I, I found a shop that was like a fancy dress shop. Amazing. Do you need fancy dress stuff? Dressed you never up as Columbus. You never went and bought a sat nav. <laughs> went to Dorset for the weekend. <laughs> you never go out. Why do you need a fancy dress shop? That sounds like the one thing you would hate. Oh, is just, fancy dress. You no, know, but I like looking at the. Uh, they have like a space helmet in there. Right, so you found a fancy dress shop. <laughs> Where are you supposed to be going that you got you had time to get sidetracked and go in a I think I was going to a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> just cut Amazing, that's the last time. So you want to get lost. Yeah, you don't want to get lost, no, do you? Because I always give myself loads of time because I get lost a lot. I always give myself get a get a No, I'm I'm just saying you, that's that's how you find little treats along the way and you, <laughs> next time you pass it or next time someone says do you know where the fancy dress shop is and go yeah I do you go, I have no idea because I was lost no, I didn't no, know where no, it was no, 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 no. normally I oh, well, I'm not going to tell you lazy cunt have you got an AZ oh that's harsh yeah find it yourself you lazy mm. twat <laughs> <laughs> so mm. what have you learned you keep going on about all this learning what yeah. have you learned what have you learned okay sum up when? sum up mankind's foray into the future I want this. This will be the introduction to a book about the future. It will then be read in a hundred years' time and go, Carl Pilkington was the most prophetic genius that's ever walked the earth. These are his words from 2010. Just some predictions. Just, predi no, just, just you... sum it up. Just sum it up. Um, I believe, start off with... I, Carl Pilkington, believe that mankind in the future will. OK, start off and with that sentence. And just have, like, a top five... Well, no, or just, just... Well, maybe just predictions. Just predictions. Yeah, OK, yeah, OK, yeah. So and, then just... a little, and then a little thing to remember, and remember ye this. So I, Carl Pilkerton, predict that in the future mankind will... Uh... Start off with that, start off with that sentence. I've given you that one. All right, I'm Carl, and, uh The future. He's already gone off-road. It's, it's a scary road. place. But the future's going to happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, there's no getting away from that. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay, your predictions are. Mm. Well, we're 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 all. Uh... Mm. 
It's not a sound bite. Uh, keep going. Hang on a minute. Give me space. Give me space. Give me a book. I've got, I've got to think about. I okay. Want to get it think. Wrong. Okay. Think first. Think and then then say it. Okay. Starting from now, these words of wisdom will be inscribed on a wall of a museum one day. Proceed. I think trousers <laughs> are going to be stopped being made. Just because right. you see, you see kids now. They've got pants around their ankles. They're going further and further down. <laughs> so I think, I think they're, they're, that's evolution. Just getting rid of the trouser. Right. It's just dropping naturally. That's the evolution of the trouser because it's dropping incredibly down the arse. You see, now, you can see arts. kids' underpants. So they're just dropping. Yeah. I think they'll get to a point when they just don't bother wearing them anymore. Right. Prediction one. <laughs> okay, that's an amazing make, one. They'll stop making trousers in the future. Good, okay. Good. Uh. We're going to get weaker. We're, we're, that's already that's already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to say, you know, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. Now they're saying eat five fruits. <laughs> <laughs> so we've definitely that's that's evidence. You can't argue with that. I probably put that first because the guy's right. What's number two? So swap that round. Okay, that's number Give one. Give him the pants second. Yep. <laughs> breath when they find yeah. this old scroll and they go Ooh, mm. what can number three be uh, <laughs> I reckon we'll blend all our food Just, oh. Yeah, I just think oh. when you think about all the stuff we eat now, cavemen yeah. chewing on big lumps of meat. Yeah. yeah. We had wisdom teeth. Yeah. Mm. Now they say, well, take them out, you're not using them. Yeah. Why are you not using them? Because your food's soft. Yeah. Mm. Sorbet. Yeah. Soups. Yeah. Uh, you know, everything's softer, just isn't it? When you get an avocado, yeah. they say, is it soft? Everyone's squeezing the food before they buy it. Yeah. No one wants anything tough. Yeah. Mm. So I think I think chewing is a t sort of it's a thing of the, thing of the past. We haven't got the time to chew. Everyone's like, hurry up, eat that. You mm. don't have to go out for dinner with Ricky. He's like, hurry up. <laughs> like, I'm still eating well, it. Well, he does blend his food, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so blending food. Great. Uh, I reckon... Uh, what else do we do now? So I've done teeth. Mm. Done trousers. I've come up with this idea. <laughs> it's sort of like glasses, but you can live wherever you want to live. What do you mean? Everything that's real, you're not looking at that anymore. This is really the future. I'd put this at number ten. <clears throat> this is like... We're only doing five, fuck me. So <laughs> what you mean is that you look through the glasses and instead of seeing what the real world, you see a tropical what paradise. What you want to see. So if you're if if you're a young kid and you like the idea of living in the urban ghetto yeah. with all graffiti on the walls and that, you can see that. Yeah, but hold on, are you walking round? Because you'll be bumping into stuff, won't you? No. no Why not? No, what reality. you mean is that's that right. the stuff that's there in the real world is being digitally reimagined yeah. in your glasses. So what was a nice country lane is suddenly now an it's urban ghetto. It's got loads ghetto. of graffiti on it. Sure. Absolutely mental point. This would never work. Absolutely yeah. one older, of the maddest so things you've ever weird, said. Really weird that one. Yeah. It yeah. could be done. It, I it, reckon it could be easily why done. Why would it be? Uh, that is, that's the one thing that, like, yeah, augmented reality is a thing. You see it on your phone every day. Um, when you put something up and there's, like, a ghost or something on the wall or something like Pokemon Go, stuff like that, where you actually get to see the thing and then they, they're talking about implementing it into, like, lenses. He's right, man. Okay, okay, because that last one, that's number four. I've blown a ball It's my context um, that they're so going to do that five. as well. There'll be, there'll be more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> Why? Why? Because because we're running out of words now, aren't we? No, no. we're not running out of no, words. We are. Now. We are definitely no. running out Just of using, words. No. It's using the letters we've no. already got yeah. and making new words. Yeah, yeah, we're making yeah. No, but we haven't got enough now. Of course we have. 
Have Plenty. you any idea? You could you could have a word with nine L's yes. before you run out. Yeah, and they do in, in Wales and what have you. That's that's because their their alphabet mm. is short than ours. They've only got something like twenty four letters over there. Right. They go mental with the L. <laughs> <laughs> now now what we do is we've got twenty six letters, mm. but we are now struggling. We're, we're not struggling, struggling at we're, all. We're, we are. We're not. Let me say stupid. Boswallocks <laughs> in shampoo. Now there's a word where they've gone. Well, we've invented something here. What? We've got something we're putting in shampoo. Boswallocks. Boswallocks. Have you just made that up? No. no it's that. It's that they go. A new, new with boswallocks and ceramide R. Yeah, but that's a new word because they have to. Inv- they come yeah, with but, a new word. But it's a. It's a terrible word. Why? Boswallocks. <laughs> That's a real word. Yeah. Now this is what I'm saying. So years ago, when they came up with all the sensible ingredients, uh, Go on. sodium. That sounds. <laughs> that sounds all right. He likes sodium. He doesn't <laughs> like with that. Because it sounds like an, an, an something in it, like an ingredient. Well, yeah, but that's because you're used to it. Is this a load of Boswells? Are you winding me up? <laughs> no, the two it's of you? real. It's, it's, it's real, and that's because 26 letters. We've wasted them. Years ago, we went mental with the, you know. Pneumonia sticking a P on it, and uh, <laughs> there's loads of words where you go, What's that like doing in there? <laughs> Whereas now, they can't do that. They've gone, Whoa, pull that back. Why is that letter there? Who and has? now you've got stuff like abbreviations and stuff. Yeah. Let's not waste letters. Let's just control it a little bit. Uh, things, no. Cars are called things like, you know, GTI or something, because they're going, Well, I can't think of a word to call this. So they're giving them letters. Think of a word now. Think of a word that hasn't been made up. What do you mean? Well, tell me a word that hasn't up. been made up. All words have been made up. No, one that hasn't. That could be used. Say if I invent oh. something now to put in shampoo, what can I call it? Quick. Cranberry. No, it's too close to that. No, we can't get that past the advertising person. Scrimpton. Scrimpton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Ricky, two goes and you accepted his second one. <laughs> well, I think we've uh, no. I think we've um, sorted out the future. Script them. Since obviously the days of Nostradamus, there's been many people who've tried to foresee the future. Uh, Carl, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's endless um, you know predictions. Apparently, there are other planets that may collide with ours. You know, there's some scientific basis on this. But if you knew with certainty that today was the end of the world, how, how would you spend that final day? So, for instance, I've always wanted to smash up a bar. Do you know what I mean? It's strange, strange, but I've always wanted the exhilaration of just smashing all those bottles, like you see in a film. But would you enjoy it as much, knowing that you're going to die in eight hours? I don't know. I suppose it's the sense of abandon, you know? I mean, maybe I'd murder a person. You know, wow. just see, you know, I don't know, but I think I'd probably go mental. Because that's Because I've always been a very reserved person, you know, I've always, I've never got into a fight, I've never caused a rumpus. Yeah, but that's a worrying thought because um, we, we don't have to have the end of the world for it to be the end of your world because a lot of people know that they're terminally ill, so mm. they don't go around smashing up bars and killing people. But I suppose I know there'll be no repercussions ultimately because they're gonna the next anyway. day everyone's gone, yeah, so there's so, not going to be mourning families. But, but, then, uh, but then how dare you deprive that person of his last eight hours or ten hours of life? Yeah. Um, I don't care because it's the last day on earth. What would you do? I've always wanted to kick a duck up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> man, they always know right where to end these, man, on a good note. I enjoyed that one. It wasn't as there wasn't as many um laughable moments as some some of the other ones. It seemed like um like I like the whole thing about him talking about the future and the augmented reality, all that stuff. It, it really didn't make sense. So and I did enjoy this one. Don't get me wrong, but if, I I don't feel like I laughed as much. I'm trying to think back like that. There there aren't as as many many like memorable um segments in this one to me until they get to the part where they're talking about like the the future augmented reality. People getting lazy, like those points really stood out. Ah, uh, Carl's funny, man. <laughs> the last thing he'll do before the world ends, he'll kick a duck up the ass. That's funny. That's <laughs> oh, there's too many words. Ah, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed this episode, man. I'm really looking forward to episode. Is it yes? Episode eight of what do you call it? Eighty the Bride. Because everybody keeps talking about how um, good... No, is it episode... Or is it episode 7? No, I think it's episode 8. 
And we're actually talking about how good uh, episode eight of Idiot Abroad is. I'm not mixing up. I'm looking, really looking forward to checking that one out as well. It's crazy. Idiot Abroad is... Uh, um, we're almost done with it. It's wild, man. Because people saying season three is so short, like three or four episodes. So, man, really been, I'm enjoying this Carl Pilkington run, man. Um, I know there's a lot more stuff. People been recommending a lot more clips of them, so there's a lot more um, to check out. But I'm gonna miss Idiot Abroad when it's over. All right, all right, guys. Um, I won't stretch this out too long, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one later.